All right, welcome to the official, official review from me of the new CD Projekt Red game, Cyberpunk 2077. Played through at least one time, and then I started to replay it on the hardest to get a feel for the side quests, as well as the difficulty difference, and so here we are. And I have to preface this from the beginning. My experience with Cyberpunk 2077 was quite the opposite, honestly, as it was for the average player of Cyberpunk. So when I first got the game release day, I played it later that night and I had absolutely no technical issues whatsoever. My roommate even told me on his Xbox One version, and now granted he has the regular Xbox One, but he did tell me that he was he was dealing with some technical issues and I told him that day and the next morning that I did not experience anything. Now with that being said, up until today, they gave us a day one patch, which I updated, and then they gave us another one roughly a day or two days later. And what I can say is every single patch update completely screwed me over. Maybe it helped everybody else, but the consistent playing that I had started to deteriorate with every patched update. And yeah, you may they may have helped the majority, but with me, they screwed me over by the end of the weekend because I, I was able to play through Cyberpunk, but the first half of the game, I had practically no issues. A couple pop-in issues here and there, but... By the end of the game, it went from the halfway point to the end. It wasn't it wasn't a disaster by any means. There were still a couple occasional pop-ins here and there, but it was more so with like getting into a car to drive, it would automatically it would automatically just take me from first person to third person, which I didn't mind. You got to see more of the vast environment that way you knew where you were driving to. Whereas the first person driving was a bit restricted view-wise. Um, but yeah, I would say my biggest issue with Cyberpunk's technical issues, I would have to say, uh, often loading times, just loading screens in general, and I don't know, there were just times where it looked like it froze, but it was just slow and it, it was running pretty rapidly quickly in my ps4 pro i could hear it like it's like the disc if it would have flown out it would have sliced my head right in half that's how fast my ps4 pro was overheating itself and it shut down by the end of last night it shut down a total of four times through my one playthrough and keep in mind release day i had none of these issues so i just wanted to preface that from the beginning now a little background for me pertaining to CD Projekt Red. So I have the Witcher novels, the two prequels, and then the five original main story novels. I played the Witcher 3 because I have a PS4 Pro and that's it. So I love everything the Witcher and the Witcher 3 Complete Edition had me very enthused with Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm going to get this out of the way and tell you right now, Cyberpunk 2077 is a really good game. From a previous Witcher fan, does it hold up to the likes of The Witcher 3? Is it as good as The Witcher 3? Not at all. Not by a long shot. Is, it still, is Cyberpunk 2077 still a good game? Yes. Now, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of my review. So let's start with the story. The story, what I can say, to simplify it first, it's basically basic plot with a well-written story inside of that with great character models and often good visuals overall, but sometimes bland-looking environments. A prime example would be Night City. The whole map of Night City looks amazing. Sometimes I played Nomad, so my prologue was driving in the desert. There were times, especially standing still out in the desert, where the environment visuals were just kind of meh. They were just kind of average looking. Now, when you would drive, because everything would be at a blur, it looked fine. Great, even. The frame rate holds up mostly well for this game, and 
the the visual oddities I just referred to are basically just the beginning. The reason being is because once you're in Night City, it's really just one environmental design. It's a futuristic looking city. Un unless you do the missions with Pan Am, in which case you go back outside. And when I played them, they were at night. So I didn't really get much more of a of an environmental design difference. But I would say at least 90% of this game is played through the city. And the city looks fine and great, but the city throughout the whole map does kind of look the same. So anyway, pertaining to the story, it has an abundant amount of side quests that detail and flesh out story characters. So in the Witcher games, the side quests dealt more with developing the world, like any decision that you made in the side quest deeply affected and impacted the world itself. In Cyberpunk 2077, it's kind of the opposite. It doesn't really affect the world or the environment that you live in, more so you finding out more about the story and especially fleshing out the main story characters, especially. The story itself, like I said, a well-written story inside of a basic save-your-life plot with great-looking characters is accurate. But I will say, it is a very engaging, very immersive, character-driven story. And also within the story, Keanu Reeves, his performance with his role as Johnny Silverhand was phenomenal. I have no complaints with Keanu Reeves personally. I think... He I don't think he was just implemented just for more money. I think he was put into this game because he's one of the nicest people out there and he played a badass character. And to me, that was like, oh, okay, that's kind of showing that he is actually multi-layered in his acting. He can play typical, nice, cool, good guy, but he can also play badass. That's cool. I like that. And he, he owned his role very well. Now, I have a couple negatives for the story in general. So in The Witcher 3, they had Illusion of Choice. And in The Witcher 3, the Illusion of Choice was basically main story dialogue option. And then a couple that would flesh out like detailing the question or your response. And they did that, but they didn't do it nearly, nearly as often as they definitely, definitely do it in Cyberpunk 2077. There's still choice-based options that you can make in Cyberpunk 2077 with the story, but co comparing full-on your own choice-based options compared with Illusion of Choice, I'd say it's like 30-70. It's, it's pretty uneven and, and unbalanced, and uh, that, kind of, that kind of drifted me away, because this was supposed to be a full-on new IP where your decisions affected the entire ending. And that's the thing about the ending. The ending that I got <clears throat> before the last 15 minutes, it didn't really seem like my choices beforehand really affected it. It kind of just is a set in stone narrative that allows you to choose sometimes what you want to be said or done. But essentially by the end of the game, the past choices don't really leave a mark except for the choices in the ending and the epilogue. Those are the ones that seem to really only matter in the end game. And like I said also earlier, it is a basic save your life plot. Now it's, it's a well-written story inside of that basic plot, but it's still nevertheless, you get screwed over, betrayed by how many people not at the beginning, but near the beginning, you lose some loved ones, you lose your life, and then you come back and you're you're trying to regain and redeem yourself. And it's a basic plot, but it's still well written because of the characters that is in the story. Another thing I have to say about Keanu Reeves' character, Johnny Silverhand, and like I said, I have no complaints with Keanu Reeves personally. His acting was phenomenal. He he hit the the part perfectly but his character Johnny Silverhand 
as much of a badass, cool, tongue-in-cheek character that he is, you also have to agree, accurately speaking, factually speaking, he is a stereotyped badass. You meet him after Act 1, at least in my playthrough, and he comes off like you get the interlude and you get he's a rock star and he's like a badass booze-infested, uh, pill-popping, ro mainstream rock star that also is a, a terrorist at night. And that's cool, like, as a character, that's fun, but you have to admit that that's also cliche and stereotyped and been there, done that many times. Now, gameplay itself, again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Great looking character models. And another thing that I cannot emphasize enough is the excellent customization. Literally, the customization is so detailed and in-depth that even when you're creating your character, you can even choose the proper genitalia that you want on them. Like, is it unnecessary and pointless? Yeah, essentially. Through the main story, it's pretty pointless, but it still, it still shows great accessibility for a game. Not many games do that. I don't think any other one. If you know of any, let me know. But another another great thing I love about this game too is whether whether you agree or disagree with how the side quests play out in the world or the story, there's also a lot a lot of quests to do between main and side quests. There is a lot to do. The downside of that, though, is that basically most quests, in, in overall, most quests play out the same gameplay-wise. You can either choose to go in in stealth or run and gun. And I can honestly say on the hardest, don't try run and gun. Main reason being is because my first playthrough, I played it on the easiest difficulty, and I have to... I have to make sure that you keep in mind the difficulty settings detail what they are like, in quotes. The easiest difficulty literally says to only to play this only for the story. There is literally no challenge with the enemies. With that being said, I, there were times where the enemies were so unbalanced and... Like I'm not against I'm not against an enemy here being weaker than an enemy here. That makes sense, but not on easy. And especially whenever they tell you enemies will not provoke a challenge. This is literally the difficulty mode for just the story. So there were times I died three, four times in a row, and I was just left there like it told me there would be no challenge whatsoever. So that's that's a negative with the gameplay already. But another thing with the gameplay, with the run and gun or stealth or the computer mechanics, hacking and all of that, it's very immersive. It completely immerses you into this world, into the story, into understanding and knowing who the characters are. And for that, I am grateful for the gameplay, mostly. And... Now, the bad things, and I already said about the ramping, unbalanced difficulty. What I can also say is, as far as the gameplay, it is basically a copy-paste watchdogs kind of gameplay, but what I will say, though, is it's a lot more fun gameplay than that in Witch Dogs. Um... One of my main problems with the gameplay was it just, it mainly just, it had really bad driving controls. Like, it would it would either be too soft of driving or too sensitive. So, there were times where I would try to turn and the, the improper brake, it would turn me way too soft where I'd just drive and barrel right into a building or an object. But then the other brake, I would even just click it. And I'd kind of just spin out all over the place. And I just, that needed more work to be done. And it, it reminded me a lot of Grand Theft Auto 4's driving. But the difference is Grand Theft Auto 4, to me personally, was more manageable. Yeah, it was the same way, but it, it just, you just had to figure out the kinks. 
on Cyberpunk 2077, whether you just clicked the button or held it in, didn't matter. You were either barreling into an object or you were spinning out. So the environment itself, the map is huge. It is a huge map. It is at least the size of The Witcher 3 and The Phantom Pain Metal Gear Solid 5. But at the same time, because you're mostly in a city, the map is also restrictive to being able to do things. Like, I spent, it was like 14 and a half to 15 hours doing nothing but main story. And within that time period, it was essentially figuring out the next mission objective and then going from point A to point B, getting a, a talking in-game cutscene with, you know, illusion of choice choices and then going from there to either being accompanied with them or going and doing it yourself. Now, I did like how sometimes after you would be done interacting with somebody, they would give you the choice. Do you want to go here by yourself or do you want to, want to accompany me in my car? I did like that as a choice. But overall, the map itself, while huge, and there is fast travel, and it doesn't tell you that there's fast travel, so it's kind of like an alternative option if you want to do it. It's not shoved in your face. You can do it. But overall, the map itself is restrictive, in my opinion. Especially comparing to games like The Witcher 3, which was right before this game by CD Projekt Red. The Witcher 3 was, was basically an, a complete open world that you could literally do anything yourself in. So... And, and yes, I do have to compare this to The Witcher 3. It's the same developer, and it's an open world. So, I mean, right there, those two categories alone, I personally believe those two categories alone mean that you need to compare the two. And like I said earlier, as far as the visuals, great-looking character models, mostly great-looking environments and de attention to detail, especially in the story details, but visually speaking, inconsistent visuals, mainly being Night City, mainly looking the same throughout, but also when you're driving like in the actual open world segments, they look better driving and blurry compared to when you're just standing there, sta looking around and staring at objects and items. And to me, that's, that's kind of a bad thing in a game. To, to be able to say, yeah, the environment looks better when you're driving and it's a blur, rather than saying, damn, look at that grass. Just staring at it, look at that grass, look how detailed it is. That's, so that's kind of a knock for me. Overall, at the very least, Cyberpunk 2077, play it once, definitely. Buy it, sure. If you like CD Projekt Red's games, this is what, their fourth, fifth game now? If you love their games if they're beloved by you definitely buy it play it at least once and i can also say the story itself too the different the three different branching paths at the beginning the plot is the same but the story settings are ultimately different you know you got nomad which is basically an independent individual before the city that just kind of does their own thing like sons of anarchy's nomads Exactly like that. Then you got the Street Kid and the Corpo. I played as Nomad and Corpo. And no Nomad and Corpo especially are two completely different story settings. Especially at least at the very beginning. Like I said, at least Nomad you start outside the city. Corpo you start in the city and you're a businessman. The basic plot is essentially the same overall going through it. But... At least they do have a good variety in branching story paths. At least at the beginning. That's that's what I can say. So overall, for me, Cyberpunk 2077, I'll replay it every now and again. I, I, I really enjoy this game. It's a really good game. Compared to The Witcher 3, though, it's not that good of a game. But it's, on its own, a really good game. So for me, I would give The Witcher 3 a 10 out of 10. Cyberpunk 2077, at the very least, a 7 out of 10. And that's still a good game. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to deter you away from this game. Cyberpunk 2077 is a must-play through at least once. So, 
Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 is a 7 out of 10. Thank you.